Uh, hi, this is Chen Zhang from Nanyang Technological University. Uh, today I'm going to present our work, Effective Redox Detection by Principled Vulnerability Modeling and Principled Exploit Generation. Uh, well, uh, first I'm going to provide some background in case that there are some audiences are not familiar with the re rejects or the redox. And then I'm going to use several examples to show the uh, general motivation and the general design choices of our proposed approaches. And finally, I'll highlight some details of our evaluation and conclude our work. Uh, well, for the regular expression, which also uh, can be called as the regex, uh, it is a basic functionality for processing uh, strings, uh, which is provided by many, um, by default by many modern languages. It can let users to identify uh, substrings which match in certain patterns uh, inside a given string. Well, here shows is a Python example that how to use the regular expression. And we can see that the second argument uh, specifies the input string that we would like to find some uh, patterns in. And the first uh, argument is the reject pattern we specified. Uh, for this case, the string is A, B, 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 C, and the reject pattern is B plus, where the plus sign indicates that the previous letter B should occur at least once. So the final match result of this uh, example is B, B, B. Uh, here I'm going to introduce more related concepts about the regular expression. Well, uh, a part of the rejects, we call it the sub-rejects. And if a sub-reject contains some in infinite quantifiers, like the plus sign, we call it a loop sub-rejects. Uh, a abbreviation is the LS. And the language of a rejects is the set of the strings it accepts. Uh, well, uh, let me introduce about, uh, let me introduce the, the concept of redos, which represents the regular expression denial of services. Well, basically, this is a type of CPU resource consumption attack. Uh, the, res the source of this kind of vulnerability, in, in our point of view, it, it lies in the fact that the match costs uh, of rejecting a string is much higher than accepting a string. Uh, well, looking at the example, uh, the rejex uh, is parenthesis A plus parenthesis plus, which accepts all the uh, strings that contain and only contain the letter A. And uh, the above graph shows this, uh, its identical representation in automata format. Well, for the, for the rejects engine or the rejects matching algorithms uh, to accept an input string, uh, the rejects engine only needs to find the one path in the automata which exactly matches the input string. For example, the input string is A A A A. We can find a path uh, exactly matches that uh, in, in the automata, which is path one two three three or one two three four. Uh, for rejecting uh, a string, the engine has to exhaustively it enumerate all possible paths. And it can only return or make the reject decision only when all the passes reject that string. Um, so for instance, for the input AAAAX, uh, there are in total 16 different passes in the automata matching AAA. Uh, if we increase the, the count or the number of the contained letter A, uh, the search cost increases exponentially. Um, so, it, so imagine that if there are hundreds or thousands of the letter A's contained, the matching process may not end in a practical time period. Well, here is a, a typical redox attack scenario. Assuming that there is a mail server containing a vulnerable rejects, and the input string can be specified by the users. So the attacker can craft a malicious input which can make the, make the process of the mail server stuck. 
uh, there are several existing works uh, trying to detect redox vulnerabilities, including the static, dynamic, and the hybrid approaches. Well, the hybrid approaches, uh, which is the most effective method, uh, approaches, and they try to combine the benefits from both the static and dynamic world. It first identifies the candidates using the summarized uh, vulnerability patterns, and then it uh, uses some S80 solver-based uh, generation strategies to generate the attack strings, and finally, it dynamically validates the generated attack strings. Uh, we are coming into our work, we identified the two challenges from the existing works. First is the inadequate vulnerability modeling. Well, uh, during our study, uh, we found that the existing, most existing patterns, they are empirically summarized and they more focused on the structure features of the vulnerable rejects rather than the semantics of the vulnerability. And the second challenge is that uh, some of their generated attack strings are sometimes, uh, some of their generated attack strings are ineffective since the gener generator does not consider the disturbances among the sub rejects uh, inside the target rejects. Let's see some um, example. Well, uh, here is the example of the first challenge. Uh, the left side is uh, a vulnerable target rejects, R1, and, uh, and the first two columns showing the matching processes of two state of our tools. Uh, let's, let's have a look at the first column, Redox Hunter. It, uh, according to its pattern, it first uh, identifies three key sub rejects. Uh, namely the R1, R2, and R3. R1 is uh, for A and R2 for B and R3 for AB. According to its pattern, uh, since the first letter of the R1 uh, is the same as the first letter of R3, uh, therefore uh, it uh, comes to a conclusion that this is a vulnerable, potentially vulnerable rejects. And the similar, uh, similar match process is, uh, also applies to the another tool reviewer. However, it returns an incorrect result. Well, for our tool ranger, uh, we do not summarize the patterns uh, from the structural features of the reject strings. Instead, we first identify the LS, the loop sub rejects inside the, the, the target rejects. And we try to summarize the pattern based on the unfolding of the LS. Well, the unfolding of the LS uh, is something similar as the, the language of, of the LS, except that the unfolding do not remove the duplicate elements. So our pattern at here is, is that we, we try to uh, identify the same elements inside the unfolding, and, the re and, the, and our, our partner reports the correct result. Well, uh, this is another example for the challenge one. We put uh, the another example here just uh, to demonstrate that uh, existing patterns, uh, they can produce both false positive results and false negative results. Uh, well, based on summarizing the global features of the unfolding of the LS, we summarized in total three patterns, uh, also considering the vulnerability severity. And the, the, the figure here, it, it would like to demonstrate that our patterns um, are more descriptive than the union of the, all the existing patterns, which we would like to provide more evaluation details later. Uh, here is the example of the second challenge. Well, remember that uh, the second challenge is the generated attack strings sometimes can be ineffective due to the disturbances caused by the sub rejects. Uh, well, let's first look at the general attack string generation workflow. Um, the generator divides the generation into three parts, the phi1, phi2, and phi3. Phi1 and Phi3 are the prefix and the postfix parts, and Phi2 is the vulnerable part. So the gen basically, the generator tries to expand the content of the Phi2 part to enlarge the attack impact. 
uh, during the attack string generation, the file one part must be, the generated attack string must first match the file one part and then match the file two part. However, for the file three part, it, 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 it should not be matched. Since remember that only the, only the rejected string can launch effective attacks. Well, um, in, in this example, the expected match string for the generator uh, is that A is matched by phi 1, all the letters C matched by phi 2, and uh, the final, uh, oh sorry, there is a typo here, this should not be S, it should be D. And uh, the, the last, uh, the, 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 the letter D should not be matched by the phi 3. However, because this generator do not consider the fact that the, the letter C used by phi 2 also can be accepted by the phi 3, therefore uh, the real match result is that the last character C will be matched uh, by the phi 3. So therefore this is an accepted string. Uh, it cannot launch an effective attack. To fix this, uh, we can analyze the relations between the phi2 and phi3 and we append the conditions to direct the generation. So uh, what we show here is just uh, one category of the disturbances which is caused by the phi3. And in, in our work, we systematically analyzed the sources of all disturbances and uh, we finally summarized the five categories of disturbances and we tried to propose uh, methods to generate corresponding conditions to guide the generation. Well, come to the uh, evaluation part. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we, uh, our evaluation data set uh, contains four existing data sets and three self-collected data sets. Uh, for the self-collected data sets, we collect them from, um, from many uh, real-world projects and in total they contain more than uh, 300 uh, thousands of rejects. Uh, in the first research question, we compare with the SOTA tools. We compare with uh, nine SOTA tools, and the key conclusion here is that uh, we can identify much more vulnerable rejects than all the existing tools. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and in, in, in another figure shown in the paper, where we could also make a conclusion that we can identify all the vulnerable rejects that are identified by the existing ones. Uh, the second research question is the ablation study. We analyzed the, the effectiveness of our each of, of all of our key components. Well, um, during the after the analysis, we uh, demonstrated that uh, either the disturbance-free attack generation strategy or the vulner or the um, LS-based vulnerability modeling contributes significantly to the final overall performance. Well, uh, finally, we applied our tool arranger into the real world projects to try to identify zero day vulnerabilities. Uh, note that there is a gap between our detected results with the real vulnerability, since we only identify vulnerable rejects. However, the vulnerability requires it is uh, exploitable. So uh, we, we did a manually validation process to uh, to fill this gap. The, the, manually, the manual validation process is basically try to identify the, the, a project which both have the vulnerable rejects and also accepts uh, uh, controllable, uh, uh, user controllable inputs. Well, uh, after analyzing Ranger into more than 300 uh, real world projects, we identified 69 uh, redox vulnerabilities, uh, which are exploitable, and we report them to the vendor and help them to fix it. Finally, we received 21 CVEs. Uh, I, I, I think this is uh, the, the, the all of my presentation. Uh, is there any questions?
Nice talk. Uh, uh, this is Ing Zhi from Johns Hopkins University. Uh, so, uh, in your analysis of like uh, JavaScript, uh, did you find any like uh, regular expression that are generated dynamically, for example, like with the user input? And if they are generated dynamically, can you still detect this as a vulnerability? Oh, you mean the rejects part and part is dynamically? Yes. Oh, um, uh, be because there are large amounts of real world projects we, we, we have to analyze, so we just uh, we just focus on the st static part. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. Um, in, in, indeed, the dynamic part is more dangerous than static part. Yeah. Hi. Uh, great talk, um, Johannes Kinder from LMU Munich. So I was wondering, out of the um, in the validation study where you found the sixty nine vulnerabilities, um, how many did you, of, of the registers that you reported were not uh, vulnerable? So like how many sort of false positives did you get in the validation? Uh, uh, I, I can give you an exact uh, number if you want uh, after the talk. Uh, for now, uh, what I remember is around, um, around tens. We analyzed the tens uh, of the uh, vulnerable rejects and we can find the one exploitable vulnerability. All right, let's thank the speaker one more time. And this is the last talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.